One of the most durable materials in the world is rubber. It can surely withstand the test of time and is very versatile too. But have you ever wondered where they came from? Well, you might be surprised to know that some of them come from trees. These are called natural rubbers and are known for their milky white appearance. This specific rubber comes from certain tree species and is extracted in a very unique way. In today's Lord Gizmo video, we will take a look at that process and get to know this natural rubber more. A single rubber tree does not produce enough rubber for the whole market. This is why they need to first clear out this woodland to plant enough rubber trees. Their workers will walk through this field and cut down some of the trees manually. Then, they use these ropes to mark the spacing for the rubber trees they are about to plant. If you are concerned with the environmental implications of this step, do not worry, because they only clear the part of the land that they will use. Next, they prepare the cuttings for planting. The workers make a clean and angled cut to give more room for rooting before they put it in a seedling bag. It needs to be a healthy stem or a clean, disease-free branch with several leaves. It needs to be at least 6 to 10 inches. They prepare several batches of this before going back to the open field. To plant these cuttings, they need to dig into the soil and the dug-up area should be square. This ensures that the plant has enough room to grow into its full size. After that, they gently place the bare stem into the hole and slowly strip away the black bag it was temporarily placed in. After some time, the cutting grows into this tree but it is bent in an awkward way. To make it grow taller and maintain a desirable shape, the workers will start pruning it. They will cut some parts of the leaves just about their nodes. Then, tie the upper leaves together. This will direct energy towards the main stem which encourages vertical growth. To extract rubber from these trees, they wound it in a controlled manner. This is called tapping. First, they draw the desired tapping panels on the trees. It is recommended that the tapping is only done to maximum depth of 6 to 7 millimeters to make sure that there will be no damage to the tree. Then, they insert a metal or ceramic spout at the base of the cut to collect the latex flow. This spout channels the latex into a cup or container hanging below. Then, they allow the rubber to flow for a few hours before they collect it. Right after they have collected the latex, a worker is assigned to check its quality and strain it. This is done to remove the impurities. Then, they pour it onto this flat pan to allow it to dry for a bit while it is being transferred to the processing facility. The collected rubber will harden, so they need to let it pass through this tool that flattens it out. It is a press machine specifically made for rubber. Once it's flat, they will proceed to hang it outside and wait for it to dry. Now for the remaining parts, workers will go through them manually and pick out any unwanted or foreign materials in the rubber. Then, they place them onto this area where they will be smoked. This process will help in the natural preservation of the rubber and also assist in its coagulation. For other processes, these collected rubbers are cut into desired sizes and placed on a dump truck. 
This will start the transportation of the rubber to processing facilities. Once they reach the facility, they will be unloaded onto this machine where they will be pressed and flattened. Underneath these two rollers is a cutter that cuts the sheets of rubber into the required size. They will be used as a lining for these steel pipes. The previously wide and flat rubber sheet will transform into this. The pipe is mounted on a rotating mandrel and the rubber sheet is fed automatically while pressure rollers ensure proper adhesion and smooth finishing. After that, the lined pipe is placed in a pressurized chamber or autoclave under controlled heat and pressure. This process cures the rubber, permanently bonding it to the steel and activating its desired properties. Once those steps are done, the pipes will be spray-painted manually by the workers. Then, they will be sent to this area where a laser machine labels them individually. Now, let us take a look at making rubber belts. This chunk of rubber is cut into two to make the whole process easier. The rubber compound is fed through heated rollers to form thin sheets of uniform thickness. It will come out as a flattened sheet of rubber. Colouring is already added to the rubber that is why it appears black. After that, it will be placed onto this conveyor belt that leads it into this smaller roller. The purpose of this machine is to place markings on the whole rubber sheet. Then, it goes through the process of emulsion. They will be sent to another conveyor belt, which leads them to this cutting area. This rubber sheet will be flattened out until it reaches this thin and smooth state. To coagulate the rubber particles into solid sheets, the latex is treated with acids or other chemicals. To improve adherence, these sheets are dried, cleaned and creeped. Various additives such as fillers, vulcanizing agents, reinforcement textiles and antioxidants are mixed with rubber to achieve the required attributes of the belt, which include strength, flexibility and resilience to wear and tear. The rubber sheets are then separated from one another by several fabric plies for strength and dimensional stability. A heated mould or press is used to apply intense pressure on the assembled belt framework. Then, they will be crumpled to get the desired qualities. Once that is done, they will be placed on this surface where they will be rolled together. The rubber will be spun around to reach the desired appearance and cut to the desired shape afterwards. These will be placed inside these chambers to allow them to process some more.
The produced rubber belts will be tested using this machine. It will stretch it out again and again to test their durability. Coming up next, this is the process of making rubber gaskets, tubing or seals. First of all, they will unload the rubber that they have received and weighed out. After that, it will be transferred to this area where they will be kneaded through a mechanical kneader. They also add in other additives that will make their product better. After that, they will be unloaded onto this crate to prepare for mixing. The rubber compound will be refined using this roller machine. This will also make the mixing process easier. Even when rubber is known for its durability, it is important that the mixing is done in a proper way to prevent damages. Good thing that this machine is programmed to do it in a controlled way. Plus, it also puts the welfare of the worker as a priority with its emergency settings and other controls. Once the sheet is flattened out, they will be rolled together to transfer onto these cutting machines. They are cut to a certain size and shape depending on the end product. The rubber compound is compressed in a mold under pressure and heat to form the desired shape whether it's gaskets or seals. This can be compression molding, transfer molding or injection molding. Once that is done, they will go through a series of inspections and quality control. This will be the final step before a wider market distribution. This has been Lord Gizmo and we hope you learned a thing or two. Before you leave, please don't forget to show this video some love by giving it a thumbs up, subscribing to our channel and clicking the notification bell so you can get notified whenever we have new uploads 